A very good morning and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. The BJP has sweeped the state elections, something that the markets probably had priced in, but not the scale of victory. The SGX Nifty is indicating a gap up opening of near 200 points. And well, if that does happen, that will be a new lifetime high for the benchmark index. Uh, and to discuss that, we're being joined by Purinju Veliath, the Managing Director and Portfolio Manager at Equity Intelligence India and uh, who's not only somebody who has been positive on the markets but has often also spoken in support of the incumbent party. Thank you so much for joining us, Purinju. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sadda and Akam. It's great to uh, join you guys and uh, in the morning and eat that too before the market opening on a very important day. Right, right. So, um, Aparanj, I'm trying to understand if there is any gap up opening that we see on the uh, indices today. Could that just be initial euphoria or do you think that any new highs that are made on the indices will be sustainable? See, uh, Indian uh, equities, the market has a long way to go. Uh, this kind of uh, trades, in fact, at the, end, at the end of 2015, December, I was talking about uh, multiple uh, positive triggers for the states going forward. So, the political development, uh, because that's very important. Uh, investors have to watch politics if they are long term investors, you know. Traders need not do that. They can just play with the market for a day kind of thing. Uh, but otherwise, long term security investors should have a, a look, uh, you know, monitor how the economy is managed by politicians. Uh, now, the election, uh, it has come out uh, very much in favor of the country, I would say. It's in favor of the India, in favor of a changing India, in favor of, you know, a transforming India. Uh, so that way, I think investors cannot be bearish in India uh, because our economy is very small. As I always talk about, it's just a $2 trillion economy. We can't survive with that. We have to grow. We have to grow not at 6 and 7%. We need to grow at 10 and 12 percent for some time at least for many years. Then only we can we can bring the 500 uh, you know million people out of poverty. It's very very important uh, and it's it's important for the economy and ultimately for equity investors. You know there is going to be a lot of sweet spot and positive triggers uh, going forward for the market. I'm very bullish, but at the same time. One cannot be complacent and go on picking you know anything in the market or betting on the index in a big way. Uh, that may be not uh, really uh, good at this point of time. Uh, I, I would like to talk about you know the the disruptive world ahead. It's already uh, disrupting many industries, uh, many companies, many economies. So uh, we are we are going to uh, have many challenges too. Everything won't be that easy. So investors just need not get excited at higher levels and uh, you know uh, try to make fast money. Uh, so the discipline. And uh, selectiveness is very important going forward. One has to be very selective. I used to talk, you know, the disruptive world <coughs> is going to kill many, many businesses and many professions ruthlessly. That is the world we are living in and we are going to, heading for. So this is very much uh, relevant for equity investors. Uh, the, the casual buying and, you know, just uh, buying on tips, buying on SMS tips. These are to be avoided by small investors. They should not get trapped that these outcomes will lend to the market today. Uh, do you think the election outcomes have much to contribute in terms of politics? Because uh, there aren't many important bills which are pending in the Rajya Sabha. Yes, that's a very important question, uh, Sadda and Akam. You know, now Rajya Sabha is a problem. Uh, we have, uh, uh, the, the, the good Indians are not in majority in Rajya Sabha. So that is uh, going to uh, be a block. Uh, it may take some more time for the patriots to be in majority in the Rajya Sabha. So, but that also will happen going forward in the next one, two years. Because we have to change. We need to change. Today, uh, you know, a lot of uh, anti-Modi uh, kind of a gang in the, com in the country, especially the journalists, they have been opposing every move of this government. Why they are opposing every decision of the government? Because they are so much tuned, they are so much accustomed to governments which never took decisions. Is it, is it that what we are going to do? We need to take strong, hard decisions sometimes, like demonetization, which may affect the people's lives. But for a long term good, because corruption has been the root cause, especially the political corruption, uh, that has been the root cause for the poverty in this country. 
for the underdevelopment in this country. Thank God India is rich. Structurally, our economy is so rich. We have no reason to keep half a billion people in poverty. So that corruption, how can we uh, at least make the corruption decline and better economic management can happen. So the current government, I appreciate, I salute Narendra Modi for doing the right things for the economy with a long term vision. That is what India need. So the best thing I will tell you, there are two great things happening in this country if from an investor perspective, what people should not forget. Number one is, you know, the development. Development is coming to the center stage in politics. And not only I'm not talking about BJP politics, I'm talking about development coming into politics as center, in the center stage. Even the regional and even caste-based, religion-based parties have started talking about, uh, you know, development. This is very positive for the economy and for the investors. The second thing, in the immediately what has happened, UP, I have been talking about it last few weeks. It has been proved in the UP election. The media sensationalism is failing. It is becoming ineffective. The anti Modi, uh, the corrupt journalist, and you know the poisonous, uh, 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 some of the corrupt uh, politicians, they have been spreading uh, rumors and you know they have been misleading, uh, misinterpreting uh, whatever this government has been doing. So that is becoming ineffective, which is very positive for India and the good citizens in, in India. All right, so Parenju, you know what, we, uh, I'm assuming that we're all expecting the markets to head up higher, but it's something when it comes to the earnings, they have not been as robust as the way the, which uh, markets are inching up. So my question is, when can we expect earnings to recover substantially, when we start seeing a, a considerable double digit, digit robust growth when it comes to a lot of these, uh, you know, broader market uh, uh, counters as well? Yes, it's uh, a good question again, Agam. When can we expect earnings to pick up? Uh, I will say from today. Okay. Uh, because why today? Because today we have a clarity. The current regime at the center will continue in 2019. So the economy will progress. When the economy progress, the company's earnings will progress. And that is going to lead to higher earnings. And then over a period of time, the high price earning multiples, which will go higher in fact in the coming days. From that high price earning multiples, when the earnings catch up, the peace will come back to normalcy in the next 2-3 years. Still the, still, the investors will make excellent returns on their equity investments. Uh, but the only thing is, again, I, am, I want to warn investors, don't go complacent. Investors have to be very choosy and selective in this kind of a disruptive world. Many companies will not exist after 10 years. Again, Poranju, uh, UP is an, a very, very important state when it comes to India. Are there pockets of the market which have substantially high exposure to UP which will stand to benefit from here? Um, no, I'm not in that uh, camp of thought process, uh, uh, you know, Akam. Uh, UP is a very important economy, you rightly said that. Not only just an important economy, you know something? UP by population is almost equal to Brazil. Right. And, and Akam, do you have any idea how much is the uh, GDP of Brazil? No, not really. Let me see how you guys know it. It's around $2 trillion, which is almost equal to India, right? Right, right. So, UP in India can equal to a Brazil. That means today's UP's uh, GDP can equal to the whole India's GDP if smart guys manage the economy. The current politicians cannot make it. And the uh, communal politics also cannot do it. We need very smart leaders supported by uh, stable politics, which is important. I'm not talking just about BJP. A smart leader supported by stable politics can do it, can make UP equal to Brazil's economy. Right. Purinjo, uh, Reliance industry shares are at a nine-year high. Any view on this stock? Yeah, Reliance, I have been, uh, after 10 years, I got a bullish on, on Reliance. I was talking it on a different platform two, three months back. I was talking that Reliance is an inflection point. I was betting on the digital business of uh, the futuristic business of uh, Reliance. And I was betting on the, the accumulated profits or the investments done by this company in the last 10 years on the right things. So it was an uh, underperformer for the decade and now it's coming out of that. Of course, the initial phase might have seen 20-30% kind of a movement. Uh, even from these levels, when you buy on a weekday in the stock market, not today, Reliance can give you a decent compounding uh, in the coming years. Uh, Purinjo, any private banks or non-banking financial companies that you like? Uh, <coughs> Uh, it's okay. Everybody likes uh, uh, NBFC companies and uh, microfinance companies, housing company, housing loan companies. These are it's okay. 
it's a commodity today. Um, the, the, some of these well-managed companies are going to do well in this country when the economy progress, when Modi talks about Vision 2022, you know, uh, that's something very important, uh, going to be developed, ambitious about becoming a developed country, ambitious about making housing for all. You know, these are, these are the kind of uh, important things happening in this country, done by this uh, current regime at the center. Believe me, I have no politics, uh, Agam. I am telling you, I am not part of any political party. But, you know, people are ignoring the great things happening in this country in the last few years because of the blind bias uh, people are uh, following. So, we are, we are, many, many great things are happening. The, whatever said and done in the kind of, uh, the, uh, uh, the cashless economy we are trying to create, it will, it will significantly contribute to the, uh, the investors' uh, wealth going forward and to the economy, to the formal economy. There are a lot of things happening in this country, believe me. Okay, Puranjo, so you know, you have spoken about this issue in the first question itself, but once again, I'm going to read the tweet out that you put out last night. And this was on equity. Don't be complacent. Be extremely selective. It's a disruptive world ahead and many businesses and professions will be killed ruthlessly. Now, we want you to explain a little more, and I know that you have spoken about this in the first one, but a little more, if you could be a little more specific, if it could relate to any of those sectors or stocks in that, that you're talking about in India. Yes, this is, uh, this is a very serious uh, uh, development in the whole world. Uh, the changes happening at the lightning speed. And uh, we, uh, many people talk, you know, we are at industrial revolution 4.0. And it's very different from the earlier three revolutions. We started with 1780s and 1870. Then we heard it in 1970s, the late 60s. Now it's a different era. We are at the cusp of it. So this is a very, very highly dangerously disruptive world. I'm telling you, for example, uh, you know, Akam, equity analyst in the country. I'm just telling a small thing which is relevant to equity markets. 75% of them will lose jobs in the coming years because the big data analytics coming out it's, it's going to kill the industry, it's going to change. I'm not telling these people should be worried. You know, there are certain things which big data analytics cannot do, perhaps. Common sense, wisdom, which cannot be acquired by computers. Uh, so people should focus on, you know, I'm talking about the number crunching analyst. I have uh, all the respect and I'm not talking about it because the changes happening in the world. It is such, you know, which can kill many professions going forward. Even doctors are scared. Lawyers, lawyers are getting into trouble with the new technology and the new big data analytics. Uh, Poranju, uh, I just wanted your view on the DMART uh, and Music Broadcast Limited IPOs. If you will be willing to um, uh, buy those shares on the listing day and at what sort of a premium? Yeah, it's a very important aspect in the market today. A lot of people get carried away when too much fancy is created around companies. Now, DMART is uh, one company, you know, which has come out with uh, recently the IPO. <laughs> company. I have been a close uh, good friend of uh, Damani uh, since the early 90s, in the, during the trading ring days. It's, it's a wonderful company and it's going to grow much more. It can be a 5x company in the next uh, 10 years time. That's the kind of potential that company has. And it's a highly well-managed company, but but don't be don't be compromising too much on the valuations. Valuation is the key, because if you buy a company at the wrong price, it may take away two three years of your time. Time also has got a, a cost, and you know time is also money. So, but at the same time, uh, you know with some reasonable premium, even I would recommend DMART uh, in the market. Okay. If it gives protection after a high high uh, price uh, listing. If it gives some correction at some sober times, some silly things uh, like Brexit or Trump or, you know, US Fed rate hike, you know, this kind of uh, silly things make the markets go low. So that is a time you can uh, identify such companies and buy. Right. And uh, Purinju, in one final question is I know that you've been always very positive on, you know, uh, Transport Crop, uh, Tata Global Beverages, the Future Group. Uh, do you continue to hold your positive stance on these companies? And if people were to enter these companies, even at these levels, would you advise them to do so right now? Yeah, these, the, whatever names you are talking, you know, now the transport corporation of India, even PCA Express, maybe an HSIL, you know, some of my companies like Tata Global and Tata Coffee, I love these companies. They have the relevance going forward to, they are very unlikely to be disrupted by the world. So, uh, you know, India's 
specific uh, considering the structure of India's demography and how these companies are, uh, you know, the big brands, they are number one in many segments. So these companies, uh, even at these levels, when I say even at these levels, these companies haven't really moved in the last two years. Right. So it's safe topics for investors going forward. Anyway, thank you, Akam, uh, yes. for this opportunity to interact with you. All the best. Wish you a bull market ahead. Thank you for enjoying. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for your time.